This Skoda has got the X factor. And I think that's down to the fact that the Slavia is sitting right where 20 years ago the OG Octavia sat in terms of size and mostly in terms of price as well. So this might be underneath connected to the Kushak, but in terms of spirit, it's propelled by that Octavia and it's zooming into a world packed with SUVs. So what's it packing to take them on and its prime rival in its category, the Honda City? First, the looks. I mean, obviously, it looks like a mini Octavia in that sense, the new generation. But if you look at it from certain angles, you realize there are glints of that Octavia here as well. Now, if you're going to be really anal about stuff, then the face of the Slavia is exactly like the international Fabia. And if we throw in words like butterfly, crystalline and crisp, I think we pretty much cover all the design elements of this Skoda like every other Skoda. Now, Mini Octavia, that's true compared to the current gen Octavia, but the OG, well, this is bigger than that. And compared to the Honda City, which is longer, this Slavia still ends up feeling a bit beefier. And I think that's down to the fact that it's actually much taller. And just like the Honda City, the Slavia too, makes do with 16 inch wheels here on the top end variants. Now, I can't quite put my finger on it, but something at this C pillar area doesn't quite feel Skoda to me. I think it's probably down to the way the lines are flowing into this boot because this is no longer a lift gate. Like, you know, the Skoda notchbacks do have that. But you still have a handsome rear, and underneath here, you've got loads of luggage space. Segment best plus more. There's 521 litres of boot space, which is a clear win for the sedan world. And there's 1,050 litres when you drop the seats down. That's just wow! Now, the cabin experience is similar to the Kushak, yet different. First and foremost, the dash design is a bit different. The aircon vents, for instance, are circular instead of being hexagonal. You have this flap here running down the middle of the dash, which splits it up into two. It's the colors of the cabin are lighter, which make it look more airy and make it feel more luxurious. But if you were expecting this cabin to make you go, wow, well, there are a few ifs and buts involved. The materials in use are all hard plastics, no soft touch finishes here, which is something that the city uses and gives it a more premium feel. And aside from that, let me just show you. This is something that we've experienced even with the Kushaka and is frankly a bit disappointing. But on the upside, you've got that eight speaker sound system, which is really good. So if you need to drown out the creaks and rattles, you know what to do. And if I have to think about the experience inside this cabin, I would say it's moderately flamboyant. And some of that is down to, of course, this touchscreen infotainment system, the UI of which is really handsome, something that we've come to enjoy. It has wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and you have a digital screen for the driver's instrument cluster as well. Of course, you have the cool seat. But the Slavia misses out on powered seats, and the reversing camera is fairly basic and grainy. Aside from that, all the essentials are in place that you would need in your modern day car. On the safety front, the top end variants get six airbags, but all variants get ESC with multi collision braking and Isofix mounts too. Before we talk about the back seat, there are simply clever features. One, two, three, they're there. And now the back seat. Now, this back seat, like with the Kushak, is very practical. For two six footers here, you've got plenty of room. The knee room is ample, the seat is slightly kicked up to give you good under thigh support, the roof line is scooped out to open up headroom and there's this general sense of airiness which lets you relax out here. The windows are large and there's even that additional water glass to let in that much more light. The hitch here is similar. Seating three people in the back will be a squeeze and these sharply contoured seats means that even if you push out, angle yourself, it's not very comfortable. So the best backseat for the family? The answer to that involves the Slavia and the Honda City in one frame. Exciting.
The Slavia is offered with the 1.5 litre four cylinder turbo petrol engine, which comes with a seven speed DCT or a six speed manual. But the focus of this video and for Skoda here in India is the one litre turbo petrol, which is offered with the six speed manual transmission or the six speed automatic, which is the one we are driving over here. Compared to the Rapid, the Slavia feels a lot calmer and a lot more enjoyable. First and foremost, the cabin just feels better insulated. The three-cylinder engine's thrum is very well suppressed. And then there's the tune of the engine itself. When you're in stop-go traffic, you'll find that it doesn't just lurch or jump ahead. The update in terms of engines to the Slavia is that it gets stop-start technology and brake energy recuperation, which really doesn't involve many mechanical changes. It basically has a larger battery so that it can go through the stop-start functionality easier. And that, of course, is helping fuel efficiency. Slightly lighter and more aerodynamic, the Slavia is expected to be more fuel efficient than the Kushak, which is another win for the sedan. Compared to its competition, the Slavia has the torque advantage which makes it quite zippy to drive. This three-cylinder engine may be a little down on par compared to the city but it's got a lot more torque and that makes driving around change of pace just a lot more effortless. The six-speed gearbox also is quick and is a great companion for this engine. It gets up to cruising speeds and holds them really well too. It's only when you want that really quick change of pace that's when you hear that three-cylinder nature of this engine and find that it has to work a little bit harder than maybe you would have liked. So this engine and gearbox combination is a great all-rounder. But if you want zestier performance, then you should opt for the six-speed manual, which is a lot more satisfying to drive. But what strengthens the appeal of the Slavia is the way it rides. Now this has 179 millimeters of ground clearance, which is just nine millimeters less than the Kushag and 14 more than the city. And we tried to hustle it over some speed breakers to see if it would scrape at any point, but it doesn't. The suspension is set for comfort. So if you throw it around corners like this, you will get a bit, a bit of body movement. That's because this is a sedan and the center of gravity is so much lower, it's still tidy. And over the rough stuff, it just glances over potholes and the rough bits. It is quite SUV in that sense, but we do wish the suspension was a bit quieter. At city speeds, the steering is light and well, a little lifeless. But the good thing is when the speeds increase, there is a bit more heft to it and just makes it feel more connected because of that. So if you think about it, this Slavia is actually quite practical and fun to drive in a variety of conditions, which should be worrying for the sedans, the other sedans, and the SUVs. When I think about the Octavia and the Slavia, the one thing obviously that you're missing out is that gem of a diesel engine that came on the OG Octavia. And as you know, the Slavia doesn't have a diesel. So finally, the prices. When we drove the Slavia, the prices were not shared, but they will be there in the comments. But the Slavia was expected to undercut the Kushak and the one litre version was to go head to head with the city, which makes it a very potent package despite its shortcomings. So on the whole, the Slavia is bringing solid capability and excitement. And that could make tempting and sedan be said in the same breath once again.